Hey everyone and welcome back to the Retro Channel. Now a couple of months ago I did two videos on an Apple IIc and things were going well until I realized that the disk controller chip, which is the integrated WAS machine, actually had an issue where it was overriding the boot sector of any disks that I put in that weren't write protected. So the project kind of stalled there and the actual 2C has been sitting behind me this whole time. Now, because I didn't have a spare chip or a spare 2C, there wasn't a lot that I could do. But just after putting out the second video, a gentleman by the name of John, who lives on the other side of town, contacted me and he said, I've got a spare 2C if you're interested. And I was like, yes, of course, please, thank you. And because I don't really go over the other side of town that often, it actually took quite a while to get to me. Now, Jason, AKA Mr. Lurch, actually got annoyed with how long I was taking and volunteered to pick it up for me. So that's what happened. And finally, it's here in an archive box. This thing is actually quite heavy. It's probably about 10 kilos. So not only is there a 2C in here, but there's an extra bunch of goodies that we can look at. So let's unpack the box. All right, so first up, we have the 2C. Now this one is actually a lot heavier than the one I already have. And it also looks quite a bit whiter. Let's compare the top case. Oh yeah. So this one is quite yellowed in comparison. There are a couple of little yellow spots just here, but they may come off with a good scrub. I don't know. I guess we'll find out, but yes, there is an add-on board installed in here, which we'll take a look at soon. We've got power supply, pretty standard, Australian plug. We've got this blue thing, which apparently is a dust cover. Looks a little big like a big tea towel or something. Manufactured for CARICOM Australia in Tuong, Queensland. Radio. We have this. This is the box for the add-on board that I mentioned. Ooh, and there's some discs inside. Mouse paint drawing program. Exploring the Apple logo. Oh, that sounds thrilling. Apple presents the 2C an introduction. Applied engineering, CPM AM. Yes, this Apple 2C with the add-on board can apparently run CPM software. So this will be handy to check that out, I guess, because I don't have any other CPM software lying around. System utilities for the 2C and somebody has written version 2.1, three and a half drive supported. Cool. There's another box of this. Apple presents the 2C getting down to basic. Get down. System utilities for the 2C. The Apple at work, writing, figuring and filing. All exciting things. And that's it. So yes, this is the box for the expansion board. We have the PAL modulator adapter, A2M4023. Now these are pretty hard to find, I believe. Uh, so it can do composite video and I think RF and it plugs into the video output port. Now on the PAL 2C, you only get black and white video from the composite video out. But this, I believe, will give you color in composite video. So that's pretty cool. The ZRAM or ZRAM user manual, that's what the add-on is in this machine. And there is a bunch of track to feed paper. Enabling RAM drive, all kinds of reading material. Cool. We also have some other random bits and pieces. 
this going to have a name on it? No. Nope. Apple 2C port pinout viewed from back of machine. That looks like the, the modem serial port. Apple works packing disc, international pick, packing list, 2C external disk drive. Well, I can tell you now that's definitely not in the box. External disk drive, Apple mouse. There's no mouse either. 2E diskware card that's missing the, what I assume would be a disc. 2C mouse user manual, setting up your 2C. Software sampler featured products from summer 1984. Most trendy people. Tell Apple about the 2C. In return, we'll send you updates and news on new software and peripherals. So give us your personal details and we'll spam the shit out of you. It's pretty typical even these days. Uh, international supplement to the 2C. Interactive owner's guide. Um, with any of this stuff, I'm, I'm sure it's probably available online, but if not, I guess I can scan it and put it up somewhere archive.org or something. Apple presents the 2C and interactive owner's guide. So, ooh, very colorful. Hmm. Elementary. 2C, all you need to know to get there little pocket to book. 2C system utilities book. Apple 2C user guide by Lon Pool. Let's come to clean the pool. There's old Lon there with his 80s mo. Nice one Lon. CPM handbook. Well that's probably handy because I know very little about CPM. Although that's a bit of reading. Uh, and this Apple 2C add-on kit. Ah, oh, so it tells you a little bit about it. 256K monitor ROM. This is just like a packing list for all the stuff that's supposed to come with it. Packing list. <laughs> and the last thing in that mega box about your Apple 2C add-on kit. Apple 2C has been enhanced to work with Unidisc 3.5 inch disk drives. If you don't have a Unidisc drive attached, the new system utilities disk will work just like the old utilities disk. You can stop reading right here. Okay, fine. That's it. Empty box. So, very cool. Thank you very much, John. And um, yes, I will definitely return the favor and thank you Jason for picking it up because I'm too fat and lazy all right now apparently this doesn't power on but hopefully the disc controller chip works so either way we should be able to get at least one working 2C out of this pack all these up let's just plug it in and see what it does. In fact, let's just plug the power supply just by itself in first. Okay, so power supply didn't explode. Here we go. Nothing. No lights, no beeps, no disk drive activity. So, is it the power supply? Is it the 2C itself? Suppose we can probe this. Let's see. So, from memory, this side. And this side, 0.22 volts. Well, 
That doesn't seem right. Let's just check some of the other pins. So I'm pretty sure that very pin at the bottom is like earth ground and the couple of outer pins 2.4 oh yeah okay no oh. could just be a bad connection could be the probes are not in there properly but yeah this power supply is not happy let's grab another power supply Here's one I prepared earlier. This is a more modern switching power supply that outputs 12 volts up to five amps. And I've just built a little tail that connects to the Apple and plugs into this DC barrel jack. Let's see if this one works. This drive sounds crunchy, but it works. So bad power supply. Maybe we'll check that out later. They look to be a sealed unit. Mm, that could be tricky then. Well, if we get time, we'll have a look at that. But for now, this one seems to work. Listen to that disk drive. That's not happy. Let's hook up a display. Okay, here we go. This is a handy dandy little car display designed for like a DVD player or reverse camera or something, but it takes composite video and it's just powered by 12 volts. So Nice and simple. Let's just give it power. So we're just using the composite video from the 2C. And it works. Might be a bit tricky to see that in the camera, but Apple 2C check disk drive. So we do have a display. And the actual jack is not too bad. It does sort of break up occasionally but usually they're far worse and the actual the jack inside the 2c is usually uh, terrible now it's now it's playing up probably because I did a bunch of wiggling around but that's fine we can sort that out the disk drive does seem rather crunchy let's throw in a disk try and find one that I know still works that wasn't overwritten by the other two see so this one's right protected so this should still work let's see oh it's loading help if i plug that in one moment please All right, so as crunchy as the disk drive sounds, it does seem to still work. We'll clean it up a bit, but um, that's a good sign. So far, so good. As you can see, it's just black and white. Usually this would be all colored. Maybe we should try that modulator, see if we can get color from it. just plugs in at the back here. Oh, how does that... You have to have the handle down. Yes. Oh. oh, okay. So it's got little, almost like fins that hook into the vents to keep it all secure. You just got to pick the right vents to put it in, I think. Here we go. Feels pretty snug. So yeah, the handle has to be open, otherwise it won't fit. Now I'm guessing this one at the top, which has these three dots, should hopefully give us a color output. 
or no output at all. Right, we are not seeing anything. There are a couple of knobs back here that feel very loose. In fact, oh, I think they're actually screws that they screw into the back of the 2C. So that keeps it secure. But yeah, this, not seeing anything here. Let's try the other jack. Oh, there we go. That is once again, black and white, no color there. And it's terror is a very bad image quality on that. Well, that's a bit of a shame. So maybe it's just not plugged in here properly. No signal. Hmm. Well, we might have to investigate this. There's a little potentiometer on top, which I'm not sure what that does. But yep, no signal from that jack and a terrible black and white image from the other one. Hmm. Anyway, we'll investigate that further. Let's open it up and have a look at this add-on board. So, everything looks pretty generic here. I'm pretty sure if we pull this keyboard out. Yes, there is something hidden. Let me just get the keyboard out of the way. So, this is our ZRAM or ZRAM board. Pretty neat, it just, just fits in under that keyboard, I guess. But you can see the, the 65 CO2 processor is now on this board, and I assume that's plugged into the original socket for the processor. Actually, I think the socket's over here somewhere on the main board. Let's see if we can disconnect the speaker. In fact, I didn't hear the speaker beep. Maybe the volume was just turned all the way down. I think it was. Let's try and pop this out so we can get a better look. Yeah, it's coming. So I think it's just plugged into the original sockets on the main board. There is a wire running off somewhere. So I might have to, let's just get the disk drive out of the way. We'll have to remove that anyway. There goes the handle. Get the disk drive out, we'll give it a proper clean internally while it's out. See if we can make it not so crunchy and grindy. Carefully flip this back over. We should be able to Remove the disk drive and there's dogs barking outside. That's fine. Oh. So it's, there's a clip going from the board to the timing chip. It's, uh, it's a bit how you doing, but I guess it's solid. The thing that they've used to stick it down is, is not going anywhere. So there we are. Ah, and there's our Z80 processor on the bottom. So that's required for the CPM mode. And the original CPU, the 65CO2 and the MMU from the main board get transferred onto this board as well. And it just plugs into the CPU and MMU sockets. Apart from that, there's a lot of 74 logic and 41256 uh, DRAM chips, so eight of them would be 256K, and over here is 4256 DRAM, which I believe is also 256K. So there's two banks of 256K RAM, I guess 
the CPM mode would maybe use one of those banks and the other bank is available to the 2C. I'm not 100% sure. And there's a couple of unlabeled chips which look to have the original markings um, sanded off. So I'm guessing they're either GAL or PAL chips and they probably have removed the markings so people couldn't copy this board. You And this, this cap over here is actually leaking. I can see the actual, the, what is that? The positive leg is corroded on this cap. So I'll have to replace that, but I'm guessing this board is still functional. It hasn't caused the 2C to stop working. So yeah, getting this back in is a bit tricky. All right, so after a bit more poking around, I actually found that the PAL modulator had a bad solder joint. And unfortunately that meant that I had to crack open the actual modulator itself, which isn't clipped or screwed together, it's glued together. So I can still re-glue it back together. I didn't damage the case, but I definitely damaged the little trim tools opening it up. But now we have proper color. Oh, and I worked out that if we put this back in here for a sec. So the jack up the top is actually the RF modulator jack and the other one is our PAL color output. The interesting thing about this is it actually has a 17.7 megahertz crystal, which divided by four gives us 4.43, which is the PAL color clock frequency or color carrier frequency, I should say. Now the, the rest of the Apple um, runs on 14 megahertz, which then gets divided up and you can divide that by four to give I think it's 3.5 megahertz, which is the NTSC color frequency. So it looks like Apple just, it looks like the reason the, the composite video output on the PAL machines doesn't do color is just because Apple was too lazy to actually implement the PAL color carrier frequency in the Apple IIc. So it was easy for NTSC because it's just divide by four, but for PAL, I guess they just didn't really bother. I guess it wasn't a big market, so they weren't too worried about it. But let me plug this back in and boot this up. And I do, the display is good, but it's a little bit on the small side. I probably should have opted for something a tiny bit bigger. But once this program loads, we'll be able to see our Beautiful color image. There we go. Ooh, all that color, baby. All right, that's enough of that. So that's kind of cool. At least I can get color out of this thing. I am working on another project to get color from an Apple IIc. Uh, that one is a little bit more involved and I'm still troubleshooting some things, but yeah. Eventually when I get managed to get this all together and working, uh, it should make a pretty nice color output for the 2C. So um, that's still a project, but I may be able to learn something from this modulator as well. Um, oh. And this cap looks a bit iffy. I think it may have leaked out a little bit so I might want to recap this modulator while I've still got it open before I seal it all back up again. Um, anyway, we should sort out this disk drive so I'm just going to pop it out, um, give it a clean and a lubrication and um, hopefully that'll silence it. All right, so I went in, cleaned the heads, lubricated these little guide rails that the head slides along, um, just with some 
white lithium grease, just a tiny bit on the rails. And also put a tiny drop of machine oil just in the head spindle, well not the head spindle, the drive spindle that, that clamps down to the top of the disc. So you don't want to put too much oil in there, otherwise it'll end up on the disc and you'll have a slippery disc and that could cause trouble. So we'll leave the cover off. Let's just plug it in and see if it sounds any happier. Pop this guy back in. definitely sounds a lot better. <laughs> Nowhere near as crunchy as it was. And it still works. All right, shut up. Um, while we're here, it looks like this is the only CPM software that actually came with the machine. Let's just see. Okay. Definitely need a bigger display. That's going to be tricky to read, but it does say Apple 2C CPAM, which I guess is applied engineering something or other. So in theory, we can do a DIR command because it's CPM. Yeah, and there's a little directory of the disk. And that's going to be impossible to see on the camera, but focus. Might just be able to make it out. So, um, yeah, beyond that, there's not really much to do with CPM. Um, it's very text and sort of business oriented, you know, spreadsheets and graphs and stuff but not really designed for any gaming or any fun activities so um there you go that's cpm <laughs> that's really about all i can show you uh what else the keyboard now the keyboard is incredibly crunchy and i think i will clean this one up but rather than messing around with it right now Let's just swap it out for the one I've already cleaned up in the past. Because ooh, it does take quite a bit of effort to, um, to clean these up. I mean, the simplest thing you can do is just remove the this sort of plasticky, rubbery spill guard kind of thing. That just goes underneath all the keys. And I guess it's put there to stop things actually getting into the, the keys themselves if, they're, if something's ever spilt on the keyboard. So easiest thing to do is get rid of that. You obviously have to pop all the keycaps off. Um, but then beyond that, there's actually little, tiny little spring clips that give the keys their sort of clickiness and if they're all out of whack um, yeah they're either, the keys either get really crunchy or they don't make any noise at all and they just feel I don't know almost kind of mushy so it takes a bit of stuffing around to get those perfect but yeah this keyboard definitely feels a lot better So one of the little modifications that I did do to this keyboard is to bridge this solder joint and open up this one. Now, when I first looked at it, I think it was the first 2C video, I noticed that it was going to the reset key and, you know, out of curiosity, I wanted to know what it did. And I kind of guessed what kind of function it would have, but because I've done it to this keyboard, I can now demonstrate it. So with those solder joints reversed, rather than hitting control reset to break out of this, this prompt, you now just hit reset. 
So that causes a break. And likewise, rather than having to hit open Apple control reset, you can now just do open Apple reset. So it removes the need to hit control to perform these functions. The control key still works as it normally would. Um, but yeah, you just don't have to hit it in combination to reboot the machine or to um, break out of the program. So there you go. That's if you wanted to do something like that, that's seems to be how it's done. I don't remember what happened. I'm pretty sure you, you have to swap these two around so you can't bridge both of them. And likewise, you can't have them both open. You need to basically swap either one of them bridged and one of them open or one of them open, one of them bridged. It has to be one way or the other. So um, yeah, that's what that does. But yeah, this keyboard, I did clean up and it's a lot nicer to play with than this one, which is yeah, a, a crunchy mess. So got a nice keyboard, nice disk drive, nice expansion board. Nice modulator that I'll recap. And on that note, I think we're going to leave the 2C here. There's still a bunch of stuff that I need to do, like cleaning up the case, recapping this modulator, restoring all these disks that the old disk drive overwrote. But I'm going to do all that off camera because it's not that exciting to watch. But we will return and I'll have software to show you and a ROM upgrade and a joystick adapter and possibly something else back there that I've forgotten about. So until then, um, thank you very much for watching the Retro Channel. A big thanks to John for the Apple IIc and all the documentation. Uh, thanks to Jason for going and picking it up because I'm too lazy. And a massive thanks to my patrons. And if you would like to support the channel and become a patron, I'll put links to that down below. You'll get ad-free early access videos and a bunch of other benefits. But until next time, thanks for watching the Retro Channel. See ya. That's a lot of this.